Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is me, Mr. Scarman, and today we are talking about X Men Origins Wolverine. So, this is a very interesting film. We have been reviewing X Men movies for so long now, I don't even know. I've not watched another movie besides an X Men movie in a very long time. And by that, I mean like two weeks. But I really expected to hate this film. I've heard so many bad things about it. And I just came off of Dark Phoenix yesterday. So, I don't think it's been 12 hours since I finished Dark Phoenix. I'm still in a bad mood from that film. And I came into this film expecting to hate it as much as Dark Phoenix. And I just want to say, this film is bad. It is bad. But it is bad in a hilarious way. So, it's okay. It's allowed to be bad. But this film, I wouldn't... The first thing I want to say is this film is not offensive. I think that's a very important thing to note. This film does not hurt the characters in the sense that Dark Phoenix does. I understand from some of the comments and stuff, people were not so happy with my Dark Phoenix review. But this one, this one, I'm really going to say out front. This film is not offending these characters. I think that's something I forgot to mention, maybe. He was doing a disservice to some of the characters in Dark Phoenix. In this film, at least, sure, it's bad... But it's not, it's comedic. It's comedically bad, and it's, it at least is taking itself seriously to the point where you can enjoy it. Because it's not dark. And I think that's the biggest issue with Dark Phoenix, because it's so dark. This film at least has some fun moments. I think the biggest thing is the fact that Wolverine's claws are so unbelievably silver. In the moment on the mirror, I was astounded. I was shocked with the fact that the supposedly threatening claws looked so CGI. That just shocked me. I did not understand how that happened. I will say the idea of the X-Men origin films... Could have been interesting. I think if they did that for all of the X-Men, I think that could have been cool. The issue I have with it is the fact that this film doesn't tell us much about Wolverine's origin. And not just that. I think an origin film like this shouldn't be actually showing how Wolverine got his metal claws. I think a very interesting thing that Wolverine could have done is had it been like a, just another thing Wolverine had to fight. And they could have taken aspects of this film, but I don't think this was the film they needed to go with. I think Stryker is the, fil- is the villain, really, in so many of these. I think he's the villain in three, maybe? Three of these films, I think, give or take. Because he's a villain in Apocalypse, kind of. He's a villain, he's kind of an antagonistic force in a lot of these films. But it, this is the one where he, his motives are very weird. Because he wants to make this, like, super X-Men, a.k.a. Deadpool. But why is he then... What, like, what's the point of it? I think that's the big thing. Like, is it, like, just some fun experiment? Or is it, like, oh, we're going to make it take over the world? And I think the reason... They put... They said that they put a billion dollars into Wolverine's skeleton... But, like, what's the point of that? Is it just, like, he's, like, I'm a mad scientist, I'm going to do some science stuff? Or is there, like, a purpose to it? I maybe forgot stuff. I don't remember much that happened. But besides from that, I think this film, I like Wolverine hiding out and stuff. I think that's actually done very well. I like Wolverine being subtle. I think that's all very fun. But once Wolverine starts meeting the other mutants on his, like, mutant squad, it kind of doesn't work because they're not... Unlike how X-Men First Class and pretty much all of the newer X-Men films have a n- incredible cast where you pretty much have A-list actors playing terrible characters, except for Professor X and Magneto. They're so good in the first ones. But here, besides from Hugh Jackman as Wolverine... You don't have, I don't think, really any big stars in this besides Ryan Reynolds, but he's a star now. I don't think he was much of a star then. But I think the biggest, there's so many things that this film doesn't get right. Because 
there's no... They try to get some big actors. I do know that. They got Will I Am. But they're, the actors they got for this film, it's not drawing people in, and they're not great actors. I think, if you, I think this film came out in 2009. Um, I don't think it came out earlier than that. Because I think First Class came out in 2011. No, I think The Wolverine came out in 2009. I'm going to look this up now. We're going to take a quick detour from this because I think you know from if you've ever seen a video of mine, I do not like not knowing the answers when I'm looking at dates and stuff. So we're going to be looking up Wolverine on IMDb. I don't want Deadpool and Wolverine. Let's go to The Wolverine. When is this published? 2013. Okay, so when is X-Men Origins Wolverine? Okay, so it was 2009. Okay, so I do know what I'm talking about. Um, wait, so when was First Class? 2011. Okay, so I got most of it right. That's a very... Okay, so now that we're back here. For two years' difference... X-Men First Class is just leagues ahead of this film. And it just visually looks so different. This film looks just dirty. Like, the way that it's shot, the way that the actors are dressed, it doesn't look high budget, which is very weird. But, like, you kind of just have to watch it and you'll see. It doesn't look very, like, it doesn't look like they put money into it. It looks like they kind of threw a few actors on set. And that was that. And you you can't explain it. You kind of have to watch the film and be like, oh, I kind of see that. That's a little weird. But I think the idea of the adamantium bullet re- erasing the memories of Wolverine is so stupid. Um, I know something happens in Logan. I don't think I've seen Logan since it came out in theaters. And I remember very little. I do remember something happening with the bullet, and I don't think that it erased the memories. So I don't know why that was a thing. And I know the point was to end this with erasing Wolverine's memories, but I don't get why that was the whole purpose, that was the film they wanted to go with. Because it's not a very interesting plot to follow. Like, there's not much compelling about it. I will say, Gambit... This is the one time you've ever seen Gambit in live action. He's fun, but he's really not great. It just doesn't work very well. And I think a lot of the action in this film feels very cartoonish. I think that's with some a lot of the X-Men productions. But I feel like specifically this one, a lot of the action doesn't feel very thought out. It feels very... It feels like it was made by like a five-year-old. Some of the ways that the action scenes are shot and made doesn't look right. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't sound right. Um, I think Sabretooth as well. He's not a great villain. I think they don't need Sabretooth in this film for it to be a good film. They need Stryker to be a villainous force. Or they could just make the Deadpool the main villain. And I think Deadpool is not... is He's terrible. Which is, I can't even say anything else. It's just so bad. Especially with how I'm about to watch Deadpool in a few days. Like, it's so bad. But I wish that we got more of some of the characters in this. Because I feel like we got a lot of different actors, but we didn't get much from any of the actors. And I think this film is only like an hour 55. I don't think this even crosses the two hour mark. And we don't have many characters to follow. And it's a very odd decision for them to make. I don't know why there's not... Like, besides from Wolverine, we don't care about any of the other characters. Like, if you look at the plot of this, we have Sabretooth and we have Gambit and we have Will I Am, None of which are interesting characters to follow. And I think there are fun moments throughout. There are a few good moments and there's a ton of funny moments. But not, like, comedic funny, like, this is so bad funny. But I really do hope that this film can, like, I know, I, I feel like I'm doing a fan film review on this almost. Like, it just, it's, it's not offensive to the characters, but it just isn't good. 
And I don't think there's, like, I just feel like this film is just not good. It's not Dark Phoenix levels of bad, but it's the second worst so far. And I think pretty much every film from here is uphill. Because I'm also a New Mutant lover. But I'm excited to go into New Mutants. I'm, I'm just going to say that. I can't wait for that film. That film is so funny. Not even funny. I just like that film. For some reason. Can't wait for it. And yeah, I think that's all I have to say. I just don't think there's... I feel like I'm cutting these really short. I don't even know the length of this. Um, obviously, I can't... I'm not going to discuss every aspect of the film. I just feel like this film... If you... Honestly, I think if you skip this film, you aren't losing anything out on the X-Men mythos. And I mean that quite literally. I think you need to watch X-Men 1, 2, and 3. Then the prequels. And then you could skip Dark Phoenix. You could even end it... And that Days of Future Past, honestly, that's, that's where you end. You don't need Apocalypse. Or you don't even need those films. You can just end at Days of Future Past and move on to Logan. No, you need, you need the Wolverine. The Wolverine's good. The Wolverine's really... The Wolverine's so good. So excited to watch that again. And that's, that's next up. That's crazy. So excited for that. Love the Wolverine. And now I, oh, I just need to watch that now. Let me... And it's review. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.